Hey there creepy peeps and welcome to another indie movie review. Today we're going to be talking about found footage in 3D. Although I, you know, could only watch it in 2D, so. Um, <laughs> before I get into that though, I want to say a quick thank you to my creepy patron peeps for your support of my channel. Um, and a special shout out to Wicked One, that's his username anyway, for becoming creepy royalty recently. Um, thank you so, so much. Your support means so much to me. So thank you to Wicked One and all of my creepy patron peeps. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. A group of filmmakers set out to make the first 3D found footage horror movie, but find themselves in a found footage horror movie when the evil entity from their film escapes into their behind the scenes footage. Uh, I do like how they kind of try to make like the scream of found footage horror movies. So like Scream, they're playing into the cliches of the found footage style while also sometimes subverting them, while sometimes playing into them even though they acknowledge them. Um, and that's what I really like about the Scream film. So I could definitely appreciate it in this movie even though it is found footage. I also liked how they kind of blurred the lines between like what was part of the movie within the movie and what was actually part of <laughs> like the reality of the movie. Um, so it's all found footage, if that makes sense. So we obviously have the camera that the movie is being filmed on, like the found footage camera. And then we have somebody walking around who's filming behind the scenes stuff for the movie. And that's what we're watching like the main film on, if that makes sense. <laughs> but it's all filmed with 3D cameras, apparently, which I could not watch that way, obviously, because I just don't have the capability to watch that on my TV. But I liked how, um, so there's one scene, which is at the beginning of the movie, so I feel like I'm not spoiling anything, where um, they're on their way to their filming location, which is like this cabin out in the woods somewhere, of course. Um, and they come across these two older guys sitting on a porch at like a gas station and they just have like a spur of the moment like hey Let's ask them if they want to be in the film and they can be you know Like the creepy old guys that tell us don't go out there that sort of thing um, <laughs> So they go up and they try to get the guys to do it And they're like trying to film it for their movie within the movie and it doesn't really go well Like the guys don't really understand like, you know, the older guys don't really understand what they're supposed to do so they kind of just you know, thank them and <laughs> go about their way. And then the production assistant goes to get their information. So the behind the scenes guy is filming them. And then the older guys ask them where they're going. They say the cabin and then they actually like take on that harbinger role that they were supposed to do earlier. And like, you don't want to go out there like all very serious. And all of a sudden they're like, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Like they didn't do it for the movie within the movie, but they did it for the movie. And I thought that was really clever. Um, and the movie has a lot of instances like that. So I feel like they, they handled the kind of like <laughs> cliche found footage horror movie bits very well. I also kind of like how they blurred the lines of like what was actually happening like in the reality of the movie and with and in the movie within the movie obviously since everything is being filmed on <laughs> handheld cameras it's kind of hard to you know pick out what's supposed to be movie and what's supposed to be reality but it all kind of blurs together which makes sense for the plot of the movie how the the entity in the movie they're trying to film comes into reality which is the movie that we're watching God, it's confusing to try and talk about this movie. <laughs> of course, I'm gonna have a lot of dislikes. It's a found footage horror movie and I'm not a fan of those really. Um, and I actually could really appreciate, <laughs> I guess this is a like um, to kind of lead into my dislikes. There is a an instance where the director of the movie kind of just like gets really fed up and frustrated and he's like ranting about found footage and he's like, there's only like two or three really good found footage horror movies and I'm just like, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> So just be forewarned, if you don't wanna hear me talking shit about found footage horror movies, then don't fucking watch my video. I totally agree with the director in the scene in this movie where there's only like two or three really good ones. <laughs> um, there's only two or three that I really like. Um, so that disclaimer over, here we go. A lot of things, a lot of these dislikes, 
I have to give that disclaimer because they're really nitpicky. And I feel like the movie actually kind of cleverly acknowledges these things that I don't like about it, but I still don't like it. Let me just explain and hopefully that'll make sense. So, and these are gonna kind of dip into spoiler-ish territories too, so just be forewarned on that. Lots of disclaimers. Um, I wish they had explained the entity a bit better. Like, <laughs> I mean, they they kind of visually show, like literally visually show the entity moving from the behind the scenes footage into like real life within the movie, if that makes sense. Um, but they don't even really acknowledge for the movie within the movie what the entity is. And they kind of cleverly, uh, <laughs> cover this up when the filmmakers are talking about explaining the movie and the director's like, no, we should, you know, leave it up to the viewer's imagination, that sort of thing, which I really like actually. And uh, he says something to the effect of, we'll explain it in the sequel or something like that. And like in the scene, I think the director is just trying to get the other guy to stop worrying about it. But I think that's kind of funny, but I still didn't really like it. <laughs> Like there just wasn't enough information given about what the entity is. I don't mind about like not seeing it so much or like, you know, leaving it up to my imagination, like as to like what it looks like or, you know, that sort of thing. But I just wanted more information. Like, you know, like the Blair Witch, like you don't actually see the Blair Witch, but you get a lot of information about her to get your imagination going. And I guess there's like one or two theories within the movie, like the guy that plays the sound guy, in the movie says he imagines it as like the negative energy on the set because the two stars like have a history or whatever so i guess you could see it that way i don't know i just wanted it explained a little bit more i wanted to know a little bit more yeah and kind of talking about those complicated relationships a lot of the characters do have really complicated relationships with each other which you don't get to see obviously because it's not part of what they're filming in that moment. Um, I just would have liked that either explained a bit more or cut back a bit, because I feel like it was very true to found footage, I guess you could say, where it's just like, we're only able to watch, like, <laughs> from when the camera starts filming to when the camera stops filming, and there's no flashbacks or anything like that to explain these characters' histories or whatever, but. I don't know, I just feel like a lot of them had really complicated relationships with each other that we just, I don't know, it just felt like I was always trying to play catch up with them. Like they weren't, I just for me, I just felt like they weren't really explained on screen enough either. Um, I feel like there's ways you could have like shown that a little bit more visually, I guess, or even just in dialogue a little bit, but I don't know. I'm being really nitpicky and I'm aware. I'm aware of this, okay? <laughs> and I was not a fan of the ending. I won't explain exactly what happened, but it's totally cliche, um, and that's the point, I know. Um, but I kind of wish they had went with, they're talking about early on in the movie how the ending actually isn't written and it just stops. <laughs> um, and I kind of, like, since they kind of set that up, I kind of wish the movie would have just done that and just stopped. And I think that would have been a lot more clever and definitely like subverting, you know, like the cliche found footage movie ending, which is what they went with instead. So was found footage 3D worth it? Nah, not for me, but again, I will say like for the millionth time, I'm still probably gonna get hate comments, but I don't like found footage horror movies in general. There's only like two or three that I really like, so it's not for me. But if you like found footage horror movies, you will probably enjoy this, so. Please don't let my rating <laughs> affect you on that because I'm very biased. I'm gonna give it a two out of five. Um, wasn't a fan. On IMDb it has a 5.1 out of 10 and on Rotten Tomatoes it doesn't have a critic score but it has a 52% audience score, nothing on Roger Ebert. I was able to watch this on Amazon so I'll leave an affiliate link in the description box if you wanna check it out that way. There's no pressure to use that link but if you do it does help out the channel a bit. Um, and it's also um, on Shutter. I watched it on Amazon via Shutter. So if you have a Shutter account uh, you can watch it that way too. Right, so if you've seen Found Footage 3D, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay strange. Bye.